Okay. So welcome all to our big data idea, batch thirty first. So I like to discuss entirely about today's business syllabus. So whatever we have shared with you, that we will be going to discuss in detail and clarifying all your doubts, and then we can proceed further. So this is the syllabus. So in this syllabus, we plan to cover with the data engineering topics with the AWS under Snowflake that already I shared the syllabus. So just let me know if you have any doubts in this syllabus and we will discuss that in detail as well. So first experience with the multi-node cluster, that's we plan it. And we will give you three to five node cluster with entirely container basis. So this is the reality. I just started the cluster here, same like I just given you. So in this cluster, you're going to expand and do all your operation with this cluster environment itself. Let me going to show this node. So as of now, I just started with the three node cluster. Based on your system capacity, we can increase from three node to five node cluster. And if you can sync and run all your programming with your, this environment. And this is your IDE, which is input IDE. You can sync with the Hive kernel, Spark kernel, everything step by step, and you can run all your codes here. That's the reason we just designing the kernel separate, separate. So if suppose you want to execute some Hive commands and all, you just start this kernel directly and provide all your commands. Okay, so suppose if I plan to create any database. Okay, your database. So that is a mistake. I'm just going to be create now. It will be populate. So same like multiple kernels is available, like PySpark separate. And uh, if you want to go with everything in the terminal basis, here are separate terminal command as well. Just open it. So just to type this PySpark with a master yarn mode. Guys, you're able to see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. Go call. Just uh, uh, join again. Okay, so this is like a is done. So what was the job you are going to submit here? This has to be created with the application and it will be going to react with your yarn cluster. So you can adjust with the master yarn and spark submit with the deployment mode with the yarn, everything and then practice here as well with your commands. So if I'm going to create some data frames, Today is the first day session, so you don't worry about it. Whatever we are going to discuss that will be posted in the public, you'll get enough references as well from that. So all the command, whatever I'm trying to execute that I can see with the job applications.
with spark qi and stages storage everything all the references you will get in the detail about it okay so like this we just design the cluster and we will give you this is 100% it's going to be matched with your reality practice with the data entry running because you don't want to pay and you will be waiting for any one of them you can create your own and you can develop it and you can save your code and all for future references if suppose i want to save and retrieve it here are separate spaces available you can store here and you can use it as your wish like this we just designed so whenever you have a query we can you can go into execute and you can save it with output itself further if you go for the any interviews or any references with your people so you maybe have some clarification doubts so you just share to us with your queries with code and we will be going to discuss in detail that about okay so this is the first topic so any question this this is the environment related If you have any queries, just unmute and ask me. Hey, Chitra here. Uh, yeah, already hi. established. Uh, yeah, hi. Already established this um, cluster setup. Uh, we are going to work, uh, or uh, we we will create that uh, cluster in my own laptop itself. Oh, in your laptop, you will be helped to deploy it. So the same environment, whatever I'm doing it, that already the pre-built images available, that we will sharing you, you're just going to deploy and you can use it as it is. Whatever the command I'm going to execute day by day in our session, the same I just provide you as a notes and you're going to execute for your first references. Everything is working fine, then you'll be continuing with your assignments as your wish. Like that, because whatever we are practicing it here, the same, it should be worked with you. Then will you get the confidence and whenever you have a courage, you will be going deep dive. Am I right? So first we will provide all the uh, environments that are properly to you. And then the classes every day, whatever I'm using the class notes as a, this IPY notebook notes that I'm going to share with you in our common drive. So you can get it and you can do the practice as a first references. Okay. Okay. Because the, our motive is whatever the code I am trying to uh, uh, writing here, that's not a matter. But you have to do it. So everything you are going to keying step by step. It will not be copy paste anywhere. We just going to be key, uh, type everything in front of you, even debugging. So whatever the project level we are going to debugging it, that we are going to discuss with you in front of uh, all your classes. So that will help you to grow up yourself and un understand how, how we are going to debugging that in real time platform. That all we will be providing as inputs. Understood? Yes, yeah. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, in the session, the setup will be like this. Or mm. Yeah. Okay. This setup is already available. We will help to deploy it. No, in a real time organization, we will be using like this one. Real time, this ID or code development with the other ID, that is going to be happen. For the practice preferences, everything will be synced together. So you can use here. And then we will help to deploy something with the ID, real-time ID, PyCharm or Spider or uh, VS Code. We are going to execute in the project level with the object basis. So Oops concept we are going to apply and we'll be developing. That is also you'll get as a references. Okay? okay. Uh, topic you have given AWS and uh, other yeah. thing, but uh, this be... one is local. How it is get? How it no, would no, synchronize? No. I am talking about the big data platform. Once it is done, I will be go with AWS and Snowflake. We have okay. all the syllabuses. I will go with slides one by one. Whatever I promised, I will cover it. Don't worry about it. So uh, I just go through with the syllabus as of so now. Here uh, in the first slide, you mentioned DataBricks. If I am hmm. not wrong, DataBricks comes under Azure. So you will teach yeah. Azure also, uh? Yeah, it's a separate topic. So AWS Data Engineer, but mistakenly, this icon is added. Okay, Maybe so. Next. No problem. Okay, so okay. Azure and Databricks, and next uh, we are going to add it. So it's a separate batch for Azure Data Engineer. Understood. Understood. Okay. Okay. 
second uh, supporting so a supporting this is um, i will show with some demo that you will get some idea so the a developed some codes we are using some magic commands to include it and we are going to use it so you can see this one what is spark So something I'm planning to download or so ask in the day directly, it is providing some inputs. Okay, so it will be explained about what is Spark and all. So whatever the queries I can provide here, and while doing my development and all, I may be facing some challenges. I want to retrieve some inputs. So here you can see I'm trying to create the database, so I'm getting some errors, right? The one thing I'm planning to create now. So there were some mistakes, syntax error. I just do it by wanted to have, have done for references. It will be throwing some error. If I'm not able to understand this one, just choose this entirely and go to this one. Ask what is the error has raised. Something I am going to ask the question, include selection. If you're going to choose it, then automatically it will be added. So you can see this is the command I just using it. And this is the error. What is the error is, is just traced it that I am going to ask as a questions. It will be automatically populated. So this is it will really helping you to start and do uh, do some debugging options yourself. If you need any JGBT support, you can use it as of now. So like this, we will be providing the environment. So it's just providing the alternate command, just copying the command and pasting it and compare it. So create table, previously it was same only, only that uh, the statement is incorrect. It is also mentioned here, create table. So some errors is if it is raised, that is also we'll be monitoring it. Now I can run it immediately. It will provide the outcome. Okay, like that we can see the outcomes. So as of now, we are using some third party of build like with chat GPT four related. And in the future, we are developing our own custom LLM models with the 10 million parameters only respect to our topics. So AWS Azure and Big Data Platform, Spark and High Engine related, we are discussing about, right? So we are developing our own LLM model that's under in testing right now with the 10, 1 million parameters we just included and the data curation is going on. So once everything is done, our uh, validation is done, we will be going to include here and you can use lifetime free always with your enrollment. So whenever you have a doubt, you can use that as a free and you can deploy it. But still it is in development. We will be doing some lot of testing and data curation is going on. Everything is done, I will, will add in as an additional uh, model here so you can use it as a refresh. That's going on as of now. Okay, so like that, we will give you entire support with the AA because uh, right nowadays you ho hope everyone know how the AA is going on, where we are going to implement it in our environment. So problem engineering new kind of role has designed and uh, it's booming up right now. So everyone must be touch up at least with the data engineering with AA model that definitely it will help to uh, grow themselves. That's very, very important. That's the reason we just introducing ourselves and we'll be including some AA models here. Okay, so you don't want to Google anywhere that whatever the error is happening, you can check in the same terminal and you can paste it. So you will not be deviate from here. You can make 100% concentration while you are doing all your development practice. Understood? Any questions this? If, if I use the, the, the George GPT 3 only nowadays that is open, so after that, the core is uh, paid versions. Uh, uh, that is in your uh, environment, that is your setup already, Hadoop. Uh, that is for is maybe you are paid or uh, that is 
it's a free up to five dollars available we will help you help you to uh, explain you how we can sub, set up as of now you can okay. use it once custom our own llm model is ready i will give you that is 100 percent free don't worry about it okay it's taking some time there is some budget constraint to be frank i'm saying it's going on because 10 million parameters yeah, yeah, not easy uh, yeah, so, gee, understood. And now, now with this going on like this way, that's why I'm asking. That's uh, that this, is paid version. That's it. Uh, yeah, this is same. You have a five dollars. That's mm -hmm. more enough for your uh, development practice as of now. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you can create another one account and you can use it. But once our custom model is ready with pre-built, it uh, and mostly ChatGPT three will or GPT will give eighty percent accuracy or eighty five percent maximum. It, nobody it will be confirmed with hundred percent accuracy with that. But our custom LLM model we are trying to approach with the ninety five percent accuracy because we just only focus with the 10 million parameters with respect to only our data engineering platform related topics so that's going on so we are assuring you whatever it will be providing that assurity assurance with a 90 percent above that's our motive so that's the reason we are using it and doing some we are r d practice right now everything is done we will be build that package and we'll give you as your future references and that is 100 percent free don't worry about it so we are trying our best we will give you for lifetime free practice with that that's going on okay so we will try to give you as much as soon clear any other question uh just one suresh here yeah, uh, hi. We cover Spark as well, like uh, as part of this course. Mm. Yeah, that's a syllabus, right? So we'll be probably discussing all the topics, right? So I will not be entered into the syllabus as of now. Here is the syllabus detail. So what we are going to cover it. So hi, Spark and Kafka, Airflow, and AWS and Snowflake. These are the platform environment we are going to touch up. So I'll come, I'll come, I'll come to cover all the topics, what we are going to cover with content level. So I'll be mentioning all of them. I'll, we are going to discuss in detail about it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. Okay. So there's a support with the AIs we are providing you. So just let me know if you have any questions with that. I will go for the next topics. Okay, fine then. So I just explained both how he is working here. So the other samples, the sample code I just written. Okay, some of the matrix I would like to bring it up. So I just provide the same magic command, automatically it will be pop up here. Okay. Yeah, multi node real time practice. What are the job you are going to submit with the map produce, hive, or PySpark related jobs? Everything you are keep on monitor, and you can so, go with the logs that are uh, debugging options, and you can solve yourself. Everything you are going to see with that. So, real time yarn practice or whoever else touch up within your real time. This same you are going to do it here with your 100% free enrollment. So, it's not a chargeable and it's not a pseudo distribution, it's a multi cluster enrollment. You can develop all your code and practice it. Yeah, this also we have noted just before. So the system environment, we are going to see how that system is enhanced. So here have a size of your configuration capacity and the execution level with your Hadoop uh, cluster. Depends on your local disk spaces. It just generate automatically and you can use it. So the final cluster references, as of now, I just using only three node clusters. So maybe I'm going to use six double zero. What is that? What is that? Six double zero seven zero. Okay. So here is a node cluster. How much you can you have a capacity, and you can expand with your data platform. So it will be providing the GV level. So you don't worry. You can handle all your codes here. 
So with the limited data sizes as you wish. So as of now, three node cluster, I just developed it. So what is the three node cluster? What is the IP for each of them? Or how much capacity it is available? Why we are going with the minimum three node cluster, then some replication factor and data partition distributions and all while following with the default three X replication as of now, so that we just using as it is. But uh, if your system is enough memory, enough core is available, we can expand up to five node cluster that will be reached up to your reality. That is our uh, motive. Okay. So, so how high commands and B line commands we can execute in real time. So some of the sample codes. So same like in terminal, you can create one more for high kernel and you can execute. So mostly in BLN in real time that people are using. So we're going to discuss everything with the BLN as well. Both we will giving you. This kernel terminal we are using it, right? This is related to BLN. The back end some thrift server concept is going to be executed and run it. This is completely in a high shell, will directly inject into high engine directly. Everything we are going to discuss in detail. Now enter into the course overview. So first you are going to discuss Hive, Hive architecture and the commands and all. And before starting this Hive commands, once the Hive architecture is over, we are, because the very important is Hive architecture, once you understand, we are going to discuss some of the Hadoop commands and then we will be enter into the Hive tables and all. So because in real time, nobody is asking that Hadoop admin related concept. So, but we must know that Hadoop commands is very, very important. The same command you can use in some of the cloud environment as well. So we are going to discuss that in detail. And then we'll be going to interact with our Hive table creations and all the tables references. So first Hive topic one, I will be going in detail what we are going to cover it here. So here we're just going to be discussed with Hive and Metastore references and Hive server one and two information. As of now, Hive three has introduced. So we are going to discuss uh, what is the difference between one and two and three Hive engines. And then Beeline views Hive because in real time, most of the people are using the Beeline only. How Beeline and uh, Thrift Server is working the backend that we are going to discuss. And using those Beeline connections and Hive shell connection, we are going to execute. And then table creations, we are planning to discuss all related tables, most frequently using the real time with Avro format, pocket format, ORC format, or, or JSON format, or complex related types, and XML configuration. Everything we are going to create as a table and do some practice here. And then then we'll be going to discuss with the partitions and partitioning types. So partitioning types, dynamic and static partitions is available. When to use dynamic, when to use static, what is the difference between them? Uh, everything we are going to say with practical. So nothing here theory, only the highway architecture and the high meta store references that we are going to discuss in only one day sessions or maximum I'm saying or one hour session. After that, we will be entering everything with our practical manner. Everything we are going to develop code basis and we, we are going to discuss in detail. Maybe I have a sample codes from previous batch. So here some of the code is available. I'm going to develop it. There's a class notes, real-time class notes that I just developed it. Uh, now I'm going to upload here. Okay, so this is the sample codes. So the the command I just executed, this is the output I have received, same like you are also is going to be collect. So you can see the topic, some XML configuration, non-partitioning, dynamic partitioning, everything we just designed here. Same like so all the command with its with its own output is available and like a real time. So whenever you require, if you go for the interview, within a minute, you can recall what was being discussed, what is the output, if supposed to execute this command, everything you can see immediately. 
so within a short time maximum of an hour you will be prepared for your interview and you can explain confident basis you don't want to type any keywords at run time while i'm going to execute the commands what is the output i'm getting it everything you will get as a detailed information here same like you are going to get the codes with an output references and it will be deployed into code, uh, common path uh, whatever we will be providing the sharing drive right that will be upload and you can use it for your future references so the sample codes and you can whenever you want to touch up that particular topic just click on it you can go into the particular topics so everything is same and it will help you to uh, make interest with the development practice like that we just designing that entire environment we are adding some of the additional some references but it's uh, still in progress as of now and uh, mostly whatever we are using the environment is very real time uh, stable version we are planning to apply this is also will be going with a stable version as of now so it will be help you to all the commands without any syntax error help to develop in the future okay any question guys Okay. Like next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, whenever I, I, I have doubt, I will ask, I will complete that. Uh, but if I complete that high, that uh, course, once completed that high course, mm. am I ready for that? And another data warehouse like Redshift or Kafka, that is, uh, am I, uh, uh, that is, I know that difference between this and that and all, but uh, that is, uh, once uh, uh, I am full fledged in Hive, uh, I am I can ready for another uh, database warehouse. Uh, I can I can handle that those things and all. Is it possible or uh, what mostly syntax related is very close to them same. Okay. There is no much differences. I was working with Hive, Impala. And uh, what is uh, what you say that Redshift and uh, enrollment with other uh, tools like a Cosmos DB, MongoDB, Postgres, Tesla Data, and Oracle and uh, SQL Server. This all I have touch up. Most of the syntax related is close to the same. The enrollment while we are going to touch up the table creations and some commands we are going to execute right DML commands that is a bit different. It's not that much, but bit different while you are going to use it. Example, some joining parameter, they will be modified in different ways, some limitation, command limit classes, right? That is going to be modified. So, so such things you will be adopt and easily understand what's happening. What is the difference between this and that? Like that you can understand it. Indeed, dive while you go for the background, that engineering, how the tools is behave, that's a bit different because each of them following with the different, different theorems as well as some different, different architecture. Some of them suggest to go with the ASIT properties and some of them doesn't go with the ASIT. So that we must know. And uh, NoSQL DB will be React as a normal RDBMS, but everything will be stored in the backend with NoSQL related. So they will be following with some CAP theorem. So that is a different way. So the background architecture might be different, but in that code level, you have a close to the same only. So that we will be going to discuss. Don't worry about it. The concept okay. wise, what I understand that the concept wise, same that is a uh, architect wise, different that is a uh, uh, database related, data warehouse related. There is a difference between tools with their backend theorem. The theorem is matter. Example, MongoDB, if you're going to work, the MongoDB they will be providing with different concepts, right? So, table creation is a different there, and the crude operation you're going to use it. But if suppose you enter into the RDBMS or like uh, Oracle or uh, SQL Server or uh, Teradata Postgres, that all you're going to work with them. That's the same, the backend theorem is the same, that only syntax level you'll be going to face some challenges. Okay, that's the differences. Understood? Yeah, yeah, because I studied this through a different uh, data warehouse that is MPP, that, uh, uh, that is uh, massively yeah. parallel processing. That's like Impala. That's uh, Impala. Yeah. Uh, like this way, the, it will be different or... Um... No, no, we can use Impala and Hive integration also. That's not a big deal. But 90% uh, people are using Hive console because Hive is very familiar and easy. And uh, it's a uh, lot of use cases we can solve with Hive and Roman. But now Impala doesn't provide that much. One, but we can create our Hive table and we can sync with the Hive Impala engine in the back end. Like that we can do that. So okay. that's also is working in real time because all the tables is matter. So they'll be trying to create with Hive and in the backend, they are going to sync with the Impala engine. 
So that is they are doing it as of now. Okay. And few of the drawbacks is available. We don't go in detail. Ninety uh, percent, I'm sure the people are using Hive. Okay. Okay. Hive and Hive concept. Okay. While we are going to discuss about some Hive related, right? I will give you some additional more inputs to compare with other environment. And okay. while go for some project level, I will tell you because once we are uh, studying, whenever, whenever we coming discuss, that. Uh, I know, like, Jeeva, whenever coming that difference, so that if I go for this one, this one different, at that time you mention it, that difference, because I that will, you will, will be, uh, uh, yeah, thank you. Jeeva. I will share my experience, don't worry about it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay. So high project is sorry, high topic is over. We are going to discuss one of project with high in real time automation script and all. We are going to execute what was happening in the back end in real time. Like that, we will be designing it and using it. So it's completely high tables creation, script creation, and apply at runtime. What is happening in the back end with our uh, uh, yarn deployment board? Everything we are going to see it. This is what we are going to discuss it. And then Apache Spark. Apache Spark is very, very important topic. So we'll be providing with the detail here. So in this Apache Spark, we are going to discuss with the architecture level, runtime architecture, normal component architecture, everything we are going to discuss. And then we will go with some RDD transformation action. And we will be focused mostly in the data frame related. RDD, nobody is using it. But that's a concept. We will not be missing it. We will be going to discuss what is RDD, how it is big. And we will be going to see some, some samples with the transformation actions with the RDD. And then we will be start immediately with RDD to data frame operations. And we will go in deep dive with all related to data frames. Mostly in data frames, we can achieve a lot of the operations. Uh, so that's we are going to discuss in detail. OK, and a minimum 20 to 30 transformation is available. That is, we are going to discuss all the transformation and actions with the data frame. OK, so everything is a practical manner, 100% I'm saying here. So table creations and the data read and write with the data frames and all, we are going to discuss here in details. And once it is done, we'll be going to discuss with uh, that the Spark performance related topics, storage persistence level and the cache, what is happening uh, in the back end while we are going to use this kind of operations and the Spark SQL. Spark SQL is on... Uh, we will not be going with the Spark SQL mostly. Here also data frame will be giving a more importance. As a data engineer, wherever you are going to develop the code, you must be have exposure with the data frame API to compare with Spark SQL. Because non-coring data engineer, they are going to work with the Spark SQL. For those who will enter into the data engineering, they must know all the commands very confident basis. So we will help you to go with everything in the data frame. But we must know how the Spark SQL works and what is the difference between Spark SQL and data frame that we will be discussing in detail here. So Spark SQL transformations and how we are going to approach with our Spark SQL uh, data frames and uh, uh, data frame to Spark SQL environment and we will be going deep in and we will um, implement with the user defined own functions and uh, where we are going to use this UDF, where we are not using it, what is the performance drawback, we are going to face it, everything we are going to discuss in detail here. And then structure streaming. So streaming, we have a D streams and structure stream, but none of them is focusing with the D streams as of now. Only the old developer they are discussing with the D streams. So we will be going with the structure streaming in detail. Structure streaming uh, with the Kafka integration we will give you. So in the back end, the Kafka cluster separately is available that you are going to enhance and do some practice with you, and you can sync up with your Spark. So in Spark, you're going to submit the jobs and you're going to monitor everything with the client mode, cluster mode in real time, how you are, where the logs are stored, how we can see the logs, everything you're going to explain. That's a, in real time also, you're facing the same because you are going to develop the code and you are going to run in cluster mode and client mode and where we are going to collect the logs, everything you must know. So same like we are going to do it here and we'll give you the inputs that will help you to touch up with reality. Because in real the people are going for the interview, they may be struggle how the Spark engine is working, the back end with the different different deployment board. That we are going to discuss here in detail. Okay. And top performance. So top 10 performance tuning, what we are doing it. So with the sample data we just loaded and how it is behave before performance and after performance tuning, what was happened, everything we are going to discuss in detail here. 
the this is we are going to cover it once all the topic is covered we are going to discuss with one of them is batch project another one is a steam project in spark because spark is very important so we are going to compare with the real time and we are going to work with our spark project separate as well as a, a streaming project separate so two project we are going to cover it Uh, in this place, uh, you must expose and some knowledge with the uh, hoops related commands, codes, and all, so that we will be going to expose. Okay, because uh, by real time, you while you are going to develop your code, especially core engine developer, they must know how the framework is working, the backend, how to create the objects and modules, and uh, where we are going to apply those modules, how we are going to deploy it in real time. Everything is very very important because not only a single file we are going to develop multiple files, so multiple modules, and we will be going to inherit those modules in our environment, and we will be start to initiate the Spark and chain and logs everything separate separate. So how it is behave in real time? That we are going to discuss in detail. Okay. Any question, guys? Uh, hi, Dinesh. This is Darshan here. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Darshan. Yeah, uh, before entering into the Apache Spark course, uh, do we need to very well good in Python and uh, SQL? No, the basic level is enough because uh, we are yeah. going to develop everything in front of you, right? So we are also facing some command and syntax issue. How we are debugging that exposure, you will learn it by default because we are providing some assignments to you, right? So those assignments you are going to work alone or with a group. So you will we'll be providing some teams to you. So you are working together. So cross cross references will help to grow up yourself. So don't focus much with the programming. Whenever you're going to touch up the code with confident basis, automatically the program will reach to you. Just a small small syntax issues you are going to face it. That our chat GPT engine will help you to resolve it at runtime. So our request. Try to attend hundred percent all the sessions without skipping. That's our request. It's a humble request. So suppose you are missing a one topic, you are losing a lot of gap with other people. So regularly, if you are touch up with our sessions, you don't worry about it. Hundred percent, I'm sure you will be get the confidence with the coding background and the SQL background because we are going to develop. So while we are going to start the code development, we are going to explain it. At the time, you can easily understand. If suppose you are not understand what was the syntax, what kind of syntax I'm using it, just text me in WhatsApp or unmute and ask immediately because it's completely interactive session, right? If you are not understand the particular topic on particular syntax, you can ask me. I will explain. In a different way. Don't worry. And if we are planning to start some separate uh, workshop with uh, Python related the basics and the SQL related basics, that is also will help for your growth. So that is also we are doing on it. So don't worry about with the coding because the data engineer, it's not uh, they will not be focused with the coding mostly. They need to know the concept. All the concept is very important. That only will help to so all the solutions by yourself. So that's very very important. Try to focus with the concept. Coding automatically will be resolved. That I'm sure I will give you hundred percent surety with that. Yeah. Okay, Dinesh. Hmm. Any other question? Yeah, G. Uh, that is one of the data model is that is uh, uh, MLib, that machine learning library. That ML, is. Uh, ML, uh, yeah. Is it important or uh, not covered this? Uh, this course uh we already we just start with the spark ml but the mm -hmm. problem is it people mm -hmm. doesn't understand they must know some ml background otherwise it's a bit difficult if you really want i will give you one or two sessions with the ml spark ml the basic how the model is deployed with the spark ml that i will show you don't worry about it but uh, i don't like to disturb others because we are yeah, facing understood. some struggles yeah. in the future in the one of the previous session we just include spark HTML. Unfortunately, they cannot understand data cleaning. How we are using it? What was the command? What is this use of this command? That all is a bit struggle. But the people are really expect that we will give you some input separate one to one session or separate one day session. We will give you in a different time zone. Don't worry about it. Okay, because no need depth. depth, depth is depth is, yeah, no need ah. depth because the out of frame. Because if they go for that uh, asking that somewhere they using that uh, yeah, machine learning like this, if they are asking. I can. That's that way. I uh, I know very I I know very well depth knowledge like this, but I can manage that like this way. You can out of frame. That is a skeleton related framework on the integration. How to do? Yeah, what will happen? That while configuration and all that uh, type of way you can teach us. No problem. 
okay no that um, not that's not a big deal i will cover with that some basic models i will show you in front of don't worry about it but uh, uh, it's a uh, optional basis i cannot force everyone so yeah, yeah. i will give you as an optional basis those who are interested just know how it is happening so that i will give you some inputs some regression model or decision tree models is available how we are going to integrate spark library directly that i will show you okay so but uh, it is uh, apart from autobic but i will try my best with that don't worry about it another okay. one thing is that if we if i go for any third party library these are libraries so if i go for third party library somewhere they are using how to integration that configuration uh, that, can you that we will be discuss uh, because in spark uh, kafka integration and spark other for frame framework is available right we are okay. going to sync up or by default we are using third party libraries that i will tell you don't worry Okay, okay. Why I am asking? You know that is you are already set up everything you have done already. That's Kafka cluster we cannot set up. Kafka clusters okay, okay. are separate. We have okay. a Kafka cluster are like a Airflow cluster. Uh -huh. So here you can see this is a Airflow cluster. Let's see like this. Okay, here is a separate uh, Airflow cluster is available. Like a Kafka cluster is also available. It's not a part of our big data cluster. It's a separate two cluster we just designed. Mm -hmm. So here this is also a little stable version with the data set and everything is called something is available. This is also we are going to discuss same like a Kafka separate. So Kafka cluster we are going to use it and deploy it. So it is not linked together. We are planning to link in the backend, but we are going to execute the command wise. Then we are going to call that particular cluster. and we are going to approach in those times we are going to use a third party library so we will help you how we are going to use this third party library in the back end don't worry about it okay any other question there is your time ask all your doubts as much as because so you need a clarity when it, come, yeah. when it comes to structure streaming mm. can i ask uh, will you be covering a scala or is it just you will stick around with pyspark only well here all the topics we will go with python and pyspark i don't want to mingle two programming language that only raising a lot of confusion with your uh -huh. syntax and all and yeah, uh, that uh, might be confusing you while develop the code in real time and uh, while in interview basis so we are focusing everything with python and pyspark related we will explain you how we are going to sync up with our uh, kafka environment with our in uh, cluster that's completely followed by pyspark and python we okay. have some separate reference api we just decided we will help you how we are going to read and write the data with sensor analytics and all that's we are going to see in real time practical session for structure streaming can i ask what models you will be covering in in python Stuck. structured streaming kafka kafka internally we are going to discuss about how the structured streaming works and how we are going to sync up with the cluster and the window durations and the uh, stateful stateless transformation is available that we are going to discuss in detail and then we are going to use uh, how we are going to write the data whenever the logs or the job is failed how we are going to debug in some checkpoint constraint is available that all we are going to discuss in detail because sometimes what will happen you are running the job unfortunately the job will be discontinued at run time while you are going to start again it may be failed continuously you cannot write the data properly into the your environment so we will be going to cover the checkpoints how the checkpoints works in the back end while using the checkpoint constraint how you are writing the data because the data is not stored into the at run time we are planning to write the data into our cluster and raw man so like a uh, avro file or pocket or wasi file we just convert those data and write into our local that's we are going to discuss in a project we are going to read the data from streaming and write into our cluster and raw man that we are going to retrieve via hive that's we are going to see as a real time project as well mm, okay so when it comes to external dependencies I, like um, there should be some jars right so you will be giving our was jar also at run time we will tell you how to create the jar so we will not be create any jars that party jars is available uh, we are going to use as a packages here that we we will go with the command line the spark submission command right at the time we will tell you how to sync up with them that all we will help you Uh, no what i mean is that maven dependency something they will add when it comes to scala similarly for pyspark do you have any external dependency 
is a palm xml are you talking about yeah correct correct palm, palm xml here is not required here is a pip dependencies available here okay. it's everything called as pip packages that mm-hmm. i will tell you how to create the pip packages how we are, that's all will go with the deployment factor so during okay. the time i will help you how the deployment we are doing with pip packages and all in detail man i don't worry about it so sure. thank you yeah here nothing is related to scala sbtr maven everything will go with the python pip so we will help you okay uh, what is the id you will be using is it a pycharm or a... we are using pycharm vs code spider and the jupyter notebook and jupyter lab this okay four okay. you are going to see in real time practice because two of them interactive shell bases what are the command you can see the output and few of them you have to key and develop your own with the code level so that's we are using pycharm or vs code or spider ide that mm-hmm. we are going to see we will show you in front of so same like you, your assignments also you are going to touch up with this ide is only in real time so we will help you how okay. to use it okay 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 so sure. any other question guys any other questions hi i am siva i joined uh, in middle of between uh, this topic actually so after the after the session uh, can you send me the recorded session so that i will uh, check once again oh well, definitely we will give you this recording link to you you can go through with that how it is being given now don't worry mm-hmm. about it okay today and tomorrow session is so will be the posted into the public so you can refer it don't worry yeah sure. okay okay anything else guys uh, yes. uh dinesh do you have any specific timeline for this each and every topic no the concept basis that's i'm trying to say we will not be mentioning the specific timeline it's everything mm-hmm. will be covered this topic what is happening in entirely that's the reason we will not be assuring the time minimum duration we will be providing 3 months to 4 months because all the topic we have to cover with the concept basis is very very important if i supposed to go with the time duration basis i mean we skip the topic that's no, not I a correct way so yeah. Yeah, I agree with you, but way. yeah, but I'm just asking that some uh, assumption timelines like so. This will take two weeks, three weeks, like that. Just just wanted to know. So that's it. No worries. Oh, uh, it depends. For example, Kafka. You're going to practice Kafka is going to depend with the Spark. right mm-hmm. so we must know the spark db as well as the kafka both we know then only we can sync up and design it so what we are going to cover we will be going to cover on two spark batch and then we will be switch back to kafka and from, come back again to spark streaming so such things is going to be happen then only you can do the comparison you understand what was happening you will not be cover the topic level it's a integration level also is available so other time we cannot avoid this is the topic and uh, how can i say uh the priorities is important right so based on the priority we will be going to cover it and uh, we will be make some sequences with the topics so the content the topic content and the uh, integration with other environment that all is matter to take the decision this so as okay. i am sure we will be covered uh, the small even a small topic will be covered three no three session to four session a minimum i'm saying the big topic will go to eight to 10 session or 12 session so it's a kind of 24 hours or 12 hours it will be reach up i'm saying per session two hours you can consider like that it will be divided and if you maybe have some doubts that we are going to discuss to work with some assignments and all right that's uh, apart from this topic right we will not be covered we will not be con- added here whatever the assignments and we will be going to discuss those assignments in a separate right that's a different we will be mentioning some different time at the time we are going to discuss it so on regular time we are going to discuss the topics we will be scheduled a separate meeting with you and with your team we are designing a team the back end uh, within yourself within your team members yourself you are going to work together so we will be doing some reviews with you and we will give you some inputs and we will give you some different different assignments. months that you are going to work together so assurity with the time duration i may be give you 3 to 4 months the concept basis we will go and cover 100% all the topics what we promised here that i will give you okay, okay? got it thanks thanks you yeah. yeah any other question guys uh, hi dinesh uh, uh, i am audible yeah 
I would bet. Ah, uh, hi Dinesh. I'm working in startups, so I have few questions because uh, in startups, they uh, before uh, jumping into the project, they would ask about the estimation of the project, ka, and ka, they would ask about the system design, ka, architecture of the project. Ka. Would you cover this? Because ka, I know ka, uh, after you cover Kafka, I know the ka, I would know about the Kafka how it works, but ka, I don't know ka, where it can be applied ka, unless I I put it into your project. Ka. So, ka, would you cover uh, if you cover the start the use case and uh, what are the and uh, how to approach uh, system design architecture for that? Ka, would you cover it? We we will give you some project level right at the time we were designing the architecture and we are going to disclose that in detail manner. So don't worry about it. As we said, in the few of them they will be mentioning about Spark training in real time project. They may explain how this architecture is going to be expanded with your real time. All right. So that's we will be covered with assignments level because each of them have a different experience. So we will not be forcing to them to take only the same architecture plan. So we will be helping to redesign yourself and we will be going to help you how you are going to convert it. That all will come into your topics, interview topics related. That's a separate session. Additional uh, session is available. At the time, we are going to discuss how the interview is expected, how the uh, designing architecture we are going to expand and we are going to improve with our real-time platform because in this data sample data whatever i provide it will be work fine but in real time you are going to struggle with your own data set so in our assignments we will help you you are going to design your own data set you are going to practice with that we will help you and we will be solving that issues with you that's our uh, that's our responsibility because as our assignments is not related to our own data set so it's designed by you and it's related to your real-time business project use case so that will help to understand what is the architecture i can apply here what is that you are at architect level you will be going to design it we just give you some inputs how we are going to map that pipeline diagram and all that will help you don't worry about it and uh, our projects is a pipeline projects once hive is over we are trying to accommodate those hive data into our spark engine on spark engine to our scheduling airflow and all. like that we will be designing our pipeline flow so each project is a separate module and final project is a combined module we are going to combine all and we'll be designing as a final only one single project like that we just designed there also you can understand how project how it works. work once high project is over table central how we are going to interrelate with our spark engine spark program how it is going to be we'll work with that high project table central like that we will be seeing that real time practical so in this place, you will be getting some understand while you are going to designing your architecture. You may be struggle somewhere. Uh, maybe the people are going to choose Lambda architecture or Kappa architecture or Diana architecture. A lot of architecture is available. I don't like to confuse you as I'm known. Each is a different way and we are going to discuss those LLD in the back end. Okay. Before starting okay. the architecture level, we will give you that input. Don't worry about it. Okay, and uh, one more thing uh, regarding pricing estimation, uh, people, uh, my management used to ask me, uh, and whenever I'm doing a ML project, they would be asking me uh, uh, the price estimation to give to the client. Uh, would you uh, show some insights on how to uh, do price estimation for a project uh, in the that's for uh, POC level or the project level? We have to provide an ROA and all that. All I will give you some inputs in uh, uh, our interview topics. As of now, uh, during our topic level, the concept level, we are going to try. At the time, we will not be touch up. And the middle of our session, we will be designing with the uh, interview topics related. I will give you that input. How the pricing and the manpower resource allocations and uh, when, you know, how we are providing that ROA timing and all. Everything I will provide as a panelist, as a manager level. I will be working before. Uh, everything I will share you from my input. Don't worry about it. Because few of them greater than 10 years experience, you are going to make some people management in real time. So you must choose how many resources for this task, how many, how much that uh, pricing we are going to choose. And everything you want to provide as a uh, report to them. That is a separate uh, model. Uh, I will give you that input in our interview topics. Don't worry. Interview topics minimum go with minimum one or two sessions. Almost four hours we are going to discuss in detailed manner. 
and uh, one to one also if you are fine we will be going to review your resume and where the changes we are going to apply everything we are going to discuss in one to one as well so that's a different way so during the time i will give you some additional inputs don't worry and one more last question kindly bear with me so uh, actually you have no mentioned problem. about uh, you have mentioned about uh, sql basics but uh, yes. i have been uh, i had been working with sql for last uh, seven years and yes. uh, still i stuck uh, I was confused uh, when to use the uh, window function and when to use the uh, when the same th- can be achieved in uh, achieved in normal SQL query. So uh, I was just want to know uh, in real time uh, are we using any SQL for uh, window functions? Because uh, in most of the interviews uh, I've been asking about. Uh, uh, I will uh, show you joins in window functions as a ranking algorithm is available. Everything I will going to develop in front of you in the command basis. the practical okay. session just ask me i will going to explain in front of you and tell you when to use um, join so in a join left join right join cartesian joins and when to use this window in ranking algorithm what is the users what is the difference between them everything i will give you with topic level itself don't worry about it especially during high or spark session right window in function we are going to import it and we are going to use in the spark so during the time i will mention it even case class designs case when condition is available everything i will give you as an input start by okay thank okay. you and and uh, could you uh, share uh, how much data would be we would be handled by uh, this course uh, how much data is not a not database how much data set uh, some gb or tb or how much data um, we are, no we are using a tight data set because within a two hours if suppose i am going to run with the gp level of data what will happen entire day is collapsed right so during our real time we are going to discuss with uh, our data set at the time the tight data set may be level we are going to use it but minimum 10000 records i am saying because uh, how the data became in the back end that's very very important that we are going to discuss in detail but in the back end with the data sizes if i suppose to increase it will be reach has a time duration more it will be uh, make some uh, boring you so we will be focus the concept basis right so we will be using some data with mb level this that i am trying to mean with uh, 10000 records minimum i'm saying 10000 to 1 million record so this kind of data set we are going to use it and we are going to run it within a 5 minutes we are getting the output while we are getting the output what was happened the back end that's is very very important that we are going to discuss in detail manner if suppose i am going to use 1 gb of data with 1 million record or 10 million record it will run successfully but the problem is your time will be killed so completely that output will take uh, for 20 minutes or 30 minutes your class timing so i don't like to eat that uh, time you know, in our real time practical session so uh, we will be using sample data within a 5 minutes we will be retrieve the and see the query output that will help to understand what the data behavior while doing some performance related we will be going to use some sample data and that we will mention you how we are going to adapt the result size the driver memories and the executor memory everything i will give you as an input start by this Ah, sorry, okay. cut off. Ah, sorry, cut off. Uh, I do, I do understand that you can, we cannot do it in class because uh, we have limited time. But ah, uh, uh, in assignments, I will give you, or you will be designing your own assignments. You will be running your own, right? At the time, you can choose your sample data set okay. with one GB, and you can do that. That's not because, a problem. Uh, because once we do uh, the large data set, we will uh, find some difficulties. Then we will uh, debug that. so no that's problem. how uh, that's how uh, yeah. we can learn that's why yes uh, you, you no problem no problem one of the assignment we will give you that assignment as a small data set another one assignment you are going to choose your own data set we will not be forcing you to give our own data set you are going to design your data set based on your business practice you are working with some business right now right so those business use case you will be randomly cook up your data those data you can use it because you know the schema based on the schema you can generate your own data set yourself am i right so that data set you can go with millions of records or billions of record as you wish and you can expand and run with your enrollment it may be take the one hour two hour but it uh, depends on your own time only it won't affect others so during your own assignment you can choose and run it then you'll get more exposures during that time you will be facing some struggles you can explain you have separate whatsapp group is available you just explain what was the query you have faced what is the uh, problem you are getting it everything we are going to sync up there don't worry okay thank you thank you thank you yeah 
mostly your assignments is designed by your own data set we will not be forcing you so your decisions your own data set will be given the back end matter so that time you will get more exposure we will help you we will assist that's it okay. sure, sure. thanks thanks yeah any other question guys okay Hey, from that uh, from Edward question, I'm asking one more question. Yeah, that's asked uh, that we will see that uh, uh, price and uh, that uh, uh, that API and all the data architect will do that or data engineer will look after that. Few of them have more than fifteen years experience. They are going to design the flow also. So I will tell you how to design the POC related topics uh, from my experience. Don't worry, that will help you for those who are also learning grow right. They are also that particular learning crew also will get some understand. So I will try my best to share that information. Don't worry. Okay. okay. Hello, Balakir. My mic is not working. Yes, I'm absolutely beginning. Okay, my question is: What is the difference between Hive Key and Spark Key? I will tell you during our session, buddy. It's not a small thing. Uh, I will show the difference between Hive and Spark SQL in front of you. The comparisons. Okay, so compare with Hive and RDBMS also. I will tell you the differences at all in uh, during our session. There's not a right time to discuss because we will not be we will be skip from our topic to somewhere. So I don't like to go with that. So, but definitely, just remind me this question. I will help you during our topics. Okay. Okay, fine. Mm. And then half flow topics, half flow scheduling topic. We are going to discuss with how half flow is working and the internal operators available, Spark submission operator, Hive operator, and multiple custom operators available, and sensor is available, SDF sensor, and other sensors available. And after half flow 2.4 version, they have introduced one more concept is called data set. How this data set is work that we are going to discuss in detail and how we are going to use those executors and all in detail manner here. Because uh, data set is recently the people are using and designing their schedules, so it's a completely different from normal scheduling. We'll not be going with hourly basis, minute basis. Instead of that, it is taking that decision basis. So that's called a data set. So we are going to discuss that data sets in real time examples and scheduling with the daily, hourly, monthly level or minutes level. Everything we are going to see with a different different operator. So Hive operator, how we are going to submit the job in Hive through Airflow scheduler and uh, same like a Spark submit uh, submission via Airflow scheduler, everything we are going to see with real time. Because we are submitting our job from Spark, Airflow to Spark environment. So the, we're using Yarn deployment and cluster deployment and all that we are going to see in scheduling deployment. This is also Python related code development. I will help you how to develop the code with the Python in Airflow. That we are going to, mostly after topics, we are going with IDE because IDE is very, very easy and to understand how we are making the designing flow and all with airflows. So, uh, we will help you with those things uh, while we are going to discuss with the airflow topics. Okay. Any question, guys? Uh, for airflow, can I ask uh, why airflow is getting important? When you have uh, external schedulers like Autosys Control M, you can use the Autosys Control M to schedule a high SQL, or you can uh, run your Spark uh, code uh, by adding a shell script in inside Autosys or Control M scheduling it, right? Why you need Airflow? 90% companies are moved into Airflow nowadays. The reason uh -huh. behind the Airflow will be help to connect with other environment. Like control M and autosys have some limitation. We cannot go upon certain limitation. Example, I would like to read data from uh, AWS. I want to write those data into GCP. Mm -hmm. I have a connectivity here. Mm -hmm. I want to read the data from Oracle. I want to write the data into MySQL. I have a connectivity here. I mm -hmm. want to write the data, so I read the data from MSQL. I want to write the data into Hive Engine. We have a connectivity here. Mm -hmm. So a lot of operators have designed, a lot of providers is available, a lot of PMC committee team members has joined with the Airflow developer because Airflow is a very lightweight tool. Everything keep on monitor. We can have to store our audit logs separate as well. So that's the reason Airflow is very familiar right now. Within a four years, this is the only one tool is more familiar in the scheduling. 
before it was control m autosis and yeah. uh, some oz something is available the yeah, people yeah. are struggle they can handle their environment only apart from their environment if any new case has designed they cannot control it example uh, i want to read data from oracle to hive they cannot do it immediately and they cannot design the pipeline they have to modify the pipeline design in different different way they will be finally write the data Mm-hmm. but a half flow will provide a easy solution so whenever you want to sync up it's very easy and you can develop your own custom operators example suppose you have designed your own framework those framework you want to adopt and you want to create this pipeline you can do it okay. so that is also they will be included here so it's a kind of custom operators available using custom operator you can design your own module and you can implement it okay because the some of them they'll be providing with yeah saas or sap is available or some vpn accessibility restriction is available everything you can design it but you know afro will give you so, such things with your custom operator you can design by your own you can provide your vpn and the keyless authentication to this module everything can be controlled with afro by yourself Okay. Okay. Like that, they have designed it. That's the reason companies are moving to Afro Scheduler because lightweight is very, very important. Multi-threading, we can go on multi-concurrency. We can enhance because it just is submit the job. That's it. Whatever the job you are trying to design, just going to be submit in the back end. Just keep on uh, load all the logs. So uh, you know very well Python committee has already designed and communicate with all the environment at most. There are a lot of libraries available. those library they are included here as a flow and they are following and keep monitor those with the orchestration basis that is the reason i flow is very famous over this um, okay does it comes under uh, cloud era uh, for example if when cloud era is getting installed in the nodes air flow come as one of the ecosystem or no air flow is a separate cluster we are also using air flow separate cluster it's not a part of our hadoop cluster Okay. okay so we can whenever required you can design our airflow we can start our airflow cluster separate and we can integrate with our uh, hadoop environment and we can practice it kafka and airflow is a separate cluster and whenever required we can start and initiate and use it otherwise we will not be touch it we have a command we will tell you how to start this airflow cluster as plus a kafka cluster is separate okay so we we have a own control so that i will tell you don't worry okay thank you any other question guys uh, dinesh darshan here yeah tell me one small basic question like uh, we are entry level to this program so we don't have any much knowledge on the few topics so he you will cover from basic correct so you, you will cover how it's used to it's to real time in our project truth truth we we know that we have a different different experienced people even fresher is also available technical non technical so first our motive everybody has to be in a single uh, line so we will be doing the initial assignments and all right that will be sync up with your teammates because we will be going to design a team internally you are going to sync up with your teammates and you are going to working to them and get some experience with them as well and you, what are the assignments the basic level we will be provide you right will help to grow up yourself and you will be mingle with them once you are ready for from the beginner to an intermediate level those time only that uh, some better concept uh, it's a kind of intermediate or who who basis related assignments we are going to giving you at the time you can understand you can uh, get some confidence until that will not be reaching to that point we know the timeline when you are going to uh, ready for that particular environment that we will be growing you at the duration of our course itself because hive shells and the spark basics commands we are going to practice it right at the time the basic assignments you are going to work with your team member you get some exposure okay this command we have to execute this is the syntax for this command some of them you can understand at run time because the example uh, lambda uh, uh, functions and uh, list comprehensions are decorate uh, generate a lot of things is available in python at the beginning you may be feel this is a big one but while we are going to do some concept basis we are going to explain at run time and during our assignments you understand what was there once you understand we are going to implement those into our project model and we'll show you it takes some time but definitely you will get some the confidence then you will be entered to that particular environment that i am give you some assurance we will not be start at the beginning with advanced level we will be grow little bit so high project 
and the spark project while enter to the spark project that uh, multi node cluster environment we will be going to cover all of them together and we'll show we'll explain each of the lines we will be going to develop the code in front of each of the lines line by line commands so we will be going to face some challenges we are going to debug ourselves and everything we, because we don't develop any code we will not be copy and paste everything so we will be develop in front of you we are also facing some struggles everything we are going to discuss in front of you one day so definitely understand you will provide some solutions in your chat window or voice at runtime this is going to be happen to be frank i'm saying previous of our team uh, almost uh, 14 years those who are working with hr domain they are converted into data engineering they while joining them they don't have any knowledge with the programming background while we are going to work with us we will give you some input sanshi has started and work with all the coding practice from there and so she has grown up your uh, herself so like that the confidence we will give you this confidence will help to uh, go to the next level that i will give you as a promise okay yeah dinesh our request our humble request try to complete the assignments even it's a small don't hesitate don't skip it and just try to complete our assignments here whatsapp group just provide your confidence yes i have done this assignments just share your thoughts to others that will give motivate to others because in the same batch you may be 30 members or 40 members you are going to join together and you are going to work together during the time few of them complete some assignments few of them doesn't touch up it may not be making interest in the future so what are the assignments you are going to complete just inform in our common group chat window that will give motivate to others to start and do them in the back end then only they will be sync up with you they will get the confidence and finally you are going to provide some solution provider because they are facing some syntax error or concept levels they may be misunderstand and they will be more uh, away so you are provide some solution or you may be a right or wrong don't worry about it there is a learning platform so whatever you know you just share with them we will be discuss in that forum itself don't worry about it we have a separate private group forum is available all your assignments outcomes will be published there okay so that's will help our beginners to advanced level people you will get some referrals from them in the future as well for your future endeavors that we will help you don't worry okay any question guys okay shall i go next okay fine okay so in aws topics aws everything we are going to can uh, discuss with the property level because each of the services are small thing you can simply compare with the cloud environment with our other environment it's not a big deal but what is the property we are using in the back end that we are going to discuss in detail here and mostly in our aws uh, snowflake we are going to discuss programmatically not in the tool basis we are not designing the objects in storage buckets uh, s3 buckets everything in that uh, mission itself we will be going to touch up those with our program how programmatically we are going to call that particular service that we are focusing more because as a data engineer anybody can design this s3 bucket or uh, some ema cluster every anybody can design it already you are going to handle it because as a data engineer already environment is exist you are going to touch up and do some codes yourself so you want to deploy that by a programmatic one so that's we are focusing here we just create a cluster we will be deploy it and then how we are going to approach those environment through programmly that's we are going to discuss in detail here everything is a python basis so we are going to use pure three library and support libraries and we are going to call s3 bucket kinesis bucket glue etl integration athena and uh, ema cluster dynamo db and all everything goes with the program mostly we will be one time we will be show you in front of you i just designed those service what are the properties available once service has designed in the back end we are going to go start the code and we will develop it okay this is going to be happen nothing is in your ui we are trying to avoid ui 
we will not be providing web ui references only service creation once service creation is done we will be come back to ide we will start the development with id basis how id from id how we are going to communicate those cloud environment that's we are going to discuss in detail here okay understood any question okay in previous cases uh, uh, you will help us in set up the ecosystem in our laptop however mm -hmm. when it comes to aws cloud you will give a free account or how you have to create a free tier uh, i will give you my whatever i have created the s3 bucket at all right i will give you a certain duration time you can read it and you can do some practice yourself i will give you some read only access related keys and all to you you can use it and you can develop your code and test with them uh, during our session itself don't worry about it but uh, you want you with your own data set and assignments you have to use a free tier yourself Mm, okay. The free tier. The problem with free tier is that uh, some of the services, like I'm, I'm not sure whether EMR would be coming or not. Mm. EMR is not available. So we will create the cluster, right? We will give you some inputs, and you are going to touch up and doing it because cost is very high to cloud. Mm -hmm. The same only you are going to do it with your Hadoop cluster, mm -hmm. but every minute, every second, they are charging it here. So, but. We must know how this is behave. That I will give you every day in front of you, and we are going to use it, and we will be terminate it during our session. This is an active. I will share some read-only access keys to you, the policy and all. I will give you access to you. You are just going to impact that particular service in a run time. Like that only we can help you. Mm. Otherwise, the charge is more high, and it will be struggle a lot. So. Okay. First, try to go with the free tier. As well as few of them will give you read-only access environment that you can use as much as. Okay. Okay, okay guys. Any other question? Because Kinesis example, I'm saying Kinesis and Kafka close to the same. Only small differences available. When to use Kinesis? When to use Kafka? That's we will be going to discuss. What is the backend architecture they are designing? Kinesis data stream, data firehose, data analytics, lot of things available. What is that? What is the use of them? That's we are going to discuss. But mostly we will be going to compare with Kafka related. We will be see the differences in between them. How to use Kinesis? How to use Kafka? Topic level and shared level. Everything we are going to discuss in data. We must know the concept is very important. What was happening and with the practical manner. That's we are going to discuss here in detail. Okay. Uh, hi, Dinesh. Uh, just a question. Are we covering uh, no SQL databases here? Uh, because uh, document DB is a no SQL database. Uh, Dynamo in Dynamo. In Dynamo, no. Uh, actually, Dynamo DB. Uh, I have worked with before. Uh, but it's uh, you can push in Dynamo DB as a tables, right? But uh, in Document DB, you can push the whole database uh, into Document DB with. Uh, I try. I have done for a. Uh, my, for my company, but I I couldn't be able to complete it because in document DB uh, I try to migrate Mongo Mongo DB to document DB. So uh, when I try to do it, it save the in uh, Dynamo DB, it asked me to go push the, um, each collection as a uh, each table uh, as a separate table. So here uh, uh, some theorem is modified. That's part of uh, no SQL and SQL is not same. A difference between document DB and Dynamo DB, there is some difference available. Everything we have to go with the composite keys here, but the document DB will be go with some JSON format. But if suppose you really want to convert from document DB to Dynamo DB, Airflow will help you. Airflow, we have some kind of operators available that will be transformed from your document DB to Dynamo DB by default. Like that, you can design it. So using Airflow scheduler, you can read the data by batch level and write the data into Dynamo. You will get the acknowledge the law. Audit log like that, you can design it. And runtime, if you're going to design the entire the compose course, you have to design the framework and you have to deploy it. Otherwise, we have uh, one more option. It's my experience because in the document DB, everything will be stored in the JSON format. So you can read the JSON and you can adapt with your Dynamic DB at runtime with a bulk data set. Like this, also, you can design it. Okay, okay. okay. I, I thank you. I will try that. Mm. That's part architecture level. Each of the tools is a bit different, but the concept is what is the use of this tool? When to use like that? We have to understand. That's we will give you more inputs. Okay, if you are going to compare with the document DB, the collections this is nothing. Table creation, table creation is nothing is the same only. Here you are going to design the same with the schema level here. 
same like here there are some uh, what is that uh, collection references you want to point it here everything will go well some co compose a key and sort key something concept is available based on we have to design it here so we will be seeing some differences but uh, we will be going depth with what is the architecture in the back end with our dynamo db that's matter right because how the dynamo db is working that architecture we must go in exposed level that we are going to discuss here de in detail Okay, sure, sure. And one more thing, Dinesh, uh, just want to ask, uh, even if you do any, everything in uh, as a, AWS UI, you have to go and write uh, policies by yourself. Uh, how we are going to do in programmatic? Do you have any idea? Because I don't work much in AWS. I work in Azure. You um, just ask your question, I missed out. No, actually, whenever I do, I have done some uh, services, AWS services through UI. But mm -hmm. even if you uh, do, do through UI, you have to write uh, policies. Even uh, you activate everything, uh, uh, S3 packet, if you have full access, but IAM you have to go. IAM policy. Yes, I am. Yes, I am asking about IAM policy. Even if mm -hmm. you. Uh, uh do uh, activate uh, all the services which is relevant to your project still you have to go and uh, do uh, some policy uh, you have to write policies in node.js so how can we do that the same in uh, python programmatically uh, do you have any idea iam policy generation mostly the people not touch with the program the reason began if anything wrong entirely your iam policy will be crash so that mean I only control IAM policy and uh, we will tell you how to create the IAM policy roles and the groups and uh, everything we will give you some input from our end. But <coughs> people doesn't go with IAM policy in the program way. If anything wrong, entire cluster will be misused and it will be handled by different. Entire business is going to be lost. So that the people are now, nobody will be touch up with IAM policy in programming. But the services, they are going to uh, touch up with the programmatic. So that's the difference. So we will anyway, give you... We'll... Any, in real time, that is secure, security and all that IAM policy and the KMS and security policy and all, the networking engineer will look after those things. Only they will do the ID only, that is uh, how to use that uh, Word document. From there, we have to use, am I correct? Yes, you only raise as a request to them. You have to create some service ticket or anything. They will give you access. Once access is given, you are not going to do any admin level to create those services. It already exist. But exposure purpose, we are creating the service with the property level right now. But as a data engineer, how we are going to read those services and write those uh, uh, data into that particular services, that is must uh, uh, exposed. So that we will be going to achieve via our scripting and programmatic. So that is our data engineer role as well. That's we are going to focus it here. You're supposed to create this services and all that will be maintained by admin team. Separate admin team is available. They are going to call it. They have to handle it by them. We don't want to worry about the service creation and all. We must know how we are going to interact those services via program. That's our important. We are going to focus that only here. As a data engineer, that you must know in detail. So we'll uh, discuss mostly in that only how programmatically we are going to interact those services. That's the main motive with our cloud. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Dinesh, I have a question. Uh, yeah, so if even uh, if we want to create some folders within S3, so we need to raise a request to that uh, admin team, right? Yeah. Any services you want to start, you want to ask. No, no, your, uh, Mm. Sorry to interrupt. I'm not talking about the service. So S3 is already there, but I want to just create a folder in, inside that S3. So that also we need to raise a request or that one we can do it by ourselves. No, you have developed the code. You will be using your credentials to deploy your code into the environment. That's not required. Few of them will provide some real right access. There you can develop and write your code. There. From there, it, it will automatically pull it up and develop it. So that thing so is not required any uh, access to uh, any request to the admin level. Also, deployment is over. So they will be keep on monitor, right? So at the time, they will be keep on understand any bugs or raises, uh, failures happen. They will include you in that meeting and you have help to deploy that code successful to them. Everything is done. Job running successful. Let's keep on running. They only after that, I'll take all the responsibility. That will come to DevOps engineers. 
as a data engineer you want to develop the use case based program and you want to deploy into our cloud environment once cloud environment running successful without any exceptions then that code will be taking entire responsibility with devops teams okay once you are done then only devops engineer is going to take the responsibility with the 24/7 they will be keep on monitor the job whenever the job is failed they will be immediately inform us such things you will be providing six month supporting team okay because you have developed the code any challenges is going to be faced you will be providing minimum six month trial error basis you will be going to provide some support and parallelly you will be working with other projects so once after six months they will be taking all the responsibility all the q and a they will be faq will be they will be keep on monitor based on that they will be taking the decision by themselves okay any request changes uh, i am going out of the topic but maybe you, this will help you any request changes or if we will be calling it so that are all they will come back to you at the time you will be start development again and so deploy it again again this is the part of your data engineering role once data engineering development use case evaluation is done devops team just take the responsibility to run the job with the 24 hour that's it okay okay there is a difference between develop uh, data engineer and devops engineers within a short time the morning 9 to 6 you will be complete all the tasks devops engineer will be keep on monitor all your tasks with 24 by 7 Okay. Uh, even I know that I have to write the customer policy and all. Uh, if I go for the interview, data engineer interview, but if they are asking either about the IAM policy and all, that the network engineer will look after that. Like this way, I you, can handle it. You uh, must. Otherwise... Oh, sorry, sorry. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I if, if I already know that's the reason I can tell the answer. Which which won't be sort of because uh, yeah, why I'm asking if I go for another job, they are put up in somewhere. That's why I'm asking uh, how it is will uh, in future it will be uh, safe. In the interview, they are asking the concept only. What is the hierarchy with IAM policy? How it is used? When to use this policies? Like that, they may be going to use. What is the roles? What is uh, group? What is policy? And uh, what is who is suppose I want to connect with the AWS to Snowflake? What is the property I have to set up? This kind of things they may be asking you. Oh. Beyond that, nothing. And okay. nobody can ask to show. They will not be providing any endowment to uh, write, uh, sorry, or deploy in front of them. Nothing like that. They are asking whether you have understood the concept. You have the concept or not? Like, the, like the only they are going to monitor it, right? So that you must know the concept in the back end. So how the IAM policy began? What is the hierarchy level? What hierarchy we can design? So suppose third party is available. How we are going to sync up with them? How we are going to give the access to third party level? Like a Snowflake is a third party for AWS. Yes. How we are going to connect a Snowflake with the AWS? So what is the connectivity layer we are going to modify? How we are going to submit our Spark job with Snowflake from our AWS cluster? That all we must know. How to read the data from S3 bucket to Snowflake? That all we must. No, snow pipe concept. So these are all very very important as a data engineer because these are all they will provide right access to you. So you will be going to control everything by your own, right? So this thing you must know. You want to think of with them. That's very very important. Okay. Understood. Okay. Apart from you don't want to do any DevOps operation or admin operation by yourself. That will be taken care. But our training purpose, we must know how what the service how it is working. Uh, we are going to create the service in front of you. That's the reason we will provide that all the property level references. But real time is nothing. It's already available environment. You are going to work with them. While you are going to work with them, you have to do some configurations on property level changes. Some of them you have access to do it yourself. Some of them only have access to admin team. You have to raise a request to admin team. This kind of property, please adjust and provide right access to us. So we can do it ourselves. Like that, you can raise a request. So once manager approved, by default they will provide the access to you, and you can do it as you wish. This is happening. Okay. Understood. Yeah. Another one thing, see this AWS. Uh, there, there is no any lambda function in this uh, services because uh, that ETL pipeline this trigger is the available in through lambda only. Uh, why not mention it there? 
Lambda separate if required, I will tell you because S3 connect with the Snowflake in the back end only we are using some uh, Lambda integration. Maybe I will show some example of the Lambda function. Don't worry about it because everything was already designed with a template. Uh, few of them only the people are trying to create with the custom codes. Otherwise, they are using a template only. Just to remind me during our session, I will show some Lambda examples to you. Don't worry about it. Okay. That okay. Is, even that the uh, cloud ETL that is doing automatic, they will trigger it to the Lambda, then only they're monitoring the already the third party promote is like this way they connect with that uh, through monitor wise, uh, they are giving any trigger or um, any uh, error happened like this way. Usually they are using the Lambda because that is there is serverless uh, operator though. That's the so reason. Micro service in the back end. I will tell mm. you, I work with the Lambda also 3.8, uh, maximum 3.8. I have to up right now. It was entered into 3.11 Python version. I will tell you, I will create some model, Lambda model, and will deploy in front of you uh, with all the detailed information. Don't worry. Just remind me, I will okay. take one session specially for Lambda. Okay. If you really exposed, no problem. Okay. okay, so that is uh, how about the dynamo DB? We can use it, yeah. Sorry, yeah. The sample project you have mentioned it then. No, that's a uh, um, that sample project, uh, it will be biggest project or uh, so many projects we can do that. Uh, AWS that is uh, S3 to uh, NISAs through NISAs, like this way you are doing, or it is simple project, uh, it may be our biggest EMR doing using EMR like that project, how it will be in future. One of them related to EMR and uh, Kinesis related. Another one is we will be going with the glue. Glue is very important. Most of yes. the people is working with the glue as well. So we will be going to see with the glue related projects. I don't like to miss anything. So we will be creating two to three projects with AWS. One of them related to EMR basis. How we are going to apply with the EMR cluster environment. And another one is just we will be planning to go with the glue basis related. So during the time you will get some combination with other services as well. Okay. okay, I will explain the architecture in front of you. Once the architecture is clear, then only we'll be start with our enrollment, the practice with the cloud. So, okay, so at the time I will take care. So maybe you are asking the Lambda function, I may be going to interact with the S3 or DynamoDB with the Lambda. That is also Yeah, nowadays will... every interview they are asking about the trigger function. The trigger function is using the with trigger... the Lambda only. Yeah. Trigger function with the S3 to Snowflake also, is the packet is available. I will explain uh, that, but uh, uh, it's, oh, the backend, the Lambda function is going to be used. But if you want to create a Lambda function, I will create in front of you. I will deploy in front of you and we'll see samples. Don't worry about it. Okay. 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 It's a microservices. I will try to help you in that. Uh, hi, Dinesh Broca. Sorry yes. to cut off. Uh, I think uh, CSCAB, uh, some uh, ETL works. Uh, there's no need to uh, do Athena Glue ETL. Uh, you can uh, complete it in using. Uh, Lambda function uh, itself. Uh, the, yeah, it depends uh, on microservices. So if uh, your load is very low, there you can go with the Lambda itself. If your load is very high, you have to go with a different way. Depends on the architecture, oh, that selections is going to be modified. I think that's why Kaisi is uh, insisting to uh, go with Lambda and uh, just want to know about Lambda. I was working with the Lambda microservice architecture as well as a, uh, a video architecture. So at the time, few of them will be support only with Lambda, few of them doesn't support. So during the time, we have to modify and the data size is important. While you're exposing the data to the cache to uh, high, huge sizes, at the time, Lambda is working. But in certain cases, it's a small data, then you can go with the Lambda functions. I will give you some inputs in the architecture level during our session. Just to give you a reminder, okay, I will go in detail. I will go in depth in the detail. Yeah, okay. yeah. The OEI I'm asking G, that's the interview they are asking 400 is coming. That is error. There is no error. That is that's the way that the 200 some code I'm not error. Response that code codes. Is, that's uh, a response code. response uh, From there, that the 400 series, 500 series comes, the error will come. That is 200 series status is okay. Like this way, they are asking it. Now I know that time. I don't know that when I ask in that interview, that I don't know that time. So no, that no, the no, lambda no, is one of the try. most important. That's that's a response most code, how that uh, API calls is going to backs up so it's a kind of microservice api only so i will tell you some inputs on that yeah 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 that's the reason no problem no problem we will we will take care of that as well okay anything else in aws anything that i missed
okay fine so, are we are we yeah. going to integrate uh, uh, the aws with any other uh, tools yeah aws snowflake will be combo will be combined from our local to kinesis we are going to call it so like that that's the integration we are going to do it we are going okay. to create our spark code in local with the spark code is going to be communicate with our kinesis our hive table is going to be communicate with our environment everything we are going to do seeing it our s3 bucket is going to be read from aws and write into snowflake tables everything we are going to see in a real time this kind of concept is called snow pipe so i just mentioning here as well so snow pipe so snow spark something is available how it's working that all we are going to discuss it okay This is the integration between AWS and uh, Snowflake. Gee, is it possible to tell us that the Redshift warehouse that integration in future? Redshift is a huge topic. It might confuse the people, so that's the reason I just avoided. No, 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 not fully depth in that. Uh, because the same uh, already Hive's data structure is there. Mm. We can we can manage manage that from there. Only integration that configuration because while that integration we can face that uh, any debugging the configuration error and all. And that time we come to know how to integrate that. Uh, the, I know that the error and find only. Put it over here and there. That's no, but everyone, the, you know, the redshift is maybe a, yeah, maybe somewhere, some industry may be using. If required, I will try to help you. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah. But uh, it, I don't like to confuse the people. That's very very important. I'm focusing that as much as okay. okay? uh because that's important if suppose you are confused in the topic um it's not easy to rectify you are come out from that endroma right so that we will be going to discuss and uh, mostly the concept is separate it should not confuse with other concept like this only we will be mostly think about it so redshift is close to the data warehouse of our high endroma but while you go for the interview you may be confused on that so that's the reason will not be providing it but required i will show some of the example with the redshift as well don't worry apart from this class i am asking personally be if if i know uh, uh, high concept clearly i can uh, do uh, individually that redshift uh, i can manage it from separately is it possible or uh... come on if i have uh, a concept i i clearly thorough with the high concept if i go for redshift i can do that individually that uh, redshift uh, cluster itself the same way if it is uh, like high uh, redshift also or somewhere it will be vary from there from here and there um bit different but if you understand high in detail or redshift in the basic level they can you can easily adopt no problem then okay okay because the concept is a little bit different from here and there while you go for the interview you may be confused it so we are we help to uh, focus on the single point and you will not be confused yeah, it was snowflake G also separate data warehouse only so yeah. snowflake data warehouse redshift data warehouse high data warehouse if you are going to sync together you may be confused a lot yeah, so yeah. that's so but we will try our best don't worry Yeah, yeah, understood, Jay. Because why I am asking for you are coming AWS. Uh, I am using that AWS cloud, and that uh, that is Snowflake is third party. So they are going with uh, the same flavor, native uh, warehouse. Somewhere they are using native warehouse, the Redshift itself. And that time we have to know that I don't know that I. That's the reason I can manage it. That's the reason I am asking again and again. Redshift is yeah, like. Like how you, oh, that's a uh, I I can implement from there. That like that's why I'm asking. Yeah, <laughs> the problem is here three data warehouses. If you're going to study, then you may be confused. Am I right? Oh. Okay. So that's that is the only reason I will not be focused. Hive data warehouse already studied. Snowflake okay. also kind of data warehouse. Again, if you go with the Redshift, you may be definitely confused with the concept level and index basis, uh, whatever that uh, script right. You may be confused. It. That's the only thing we are uh, thinking to avoid it. If required, I will give you some input suggestions to you with Redshift. Don't worry about it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Whatever you learn, it you must expose in detail. then you will go for the new tools then is easy for you otherwise it may be confused a lot am i right okay okay, okay. oh but if required we will help you in that don't worry okay um please this is yeah Janet. hi how hi. many projects will be there like let be six projects for for each topic or how many uh, projects will be there assignments will be there 
assignments one by our own and another one by you you only design your own assignments then only because you are choosing the data that will be try struggle lot of them you are going to debug it we will help you to assist how to debug that assignments and all so one of them we will provide as assignments another one you are going to design it project level also same like one of them we are going to design it another one you are going to provide your own data set because you are working with the real time practice and real time business use case you can create your own schema those schema you are going to practice it as a assignment projects level at the time you will get some idea how we are going to override that and that will really help you for your interview basis while you go for the interview you know very well about your agenda with your business use cases you can easily adapt and explain with your big data platform is very easy for you as well am i right That's right. I like this one. Project. One is you know the the one you will assign, and another one is you know we'll come up with our own idea. Yeah, do. correct. Yes, yes. Like that, probably with your own data set. You do your yeah. data set also. We'll not be designing it. You only designing your own data set. Then probably okay. you can explain. For example, if I am going to give my own data set, it is having some basic details. Then it's not help you to explain during our your interviews, right? So you are going to design your own data set. You are going to practice with the, your own data set. That will give you more confidence. So you can compare with your real time business analytics and uh, business use cases, and you can explain with your big data platform with confident basis. That will increase your confidence more in your interview. So yeah, that yeah. we will help you. Yeah, for um for Snowflake, uh, do do you know how long you know it'll take to complete it? I know, uh, you know, you want to cover all the uh, topics one hundred percent days. I think someone the same question. So for Snow Snowflake particularly, how many uh, weeks you know you are planning to uh, cover? Ten hours a... minimum. So I can give you because I have, we will be go with everything in the project practical level, no theory mm -hmm. part. Only one session maximum. Ten percent we can give you theory. After that, everything will go with the practical. So we are going to discuss. We will be creating the topics in front of you with the command basis, and we are going to discuss in detail that right. So everything in the practical manner, all the concepts will be covered in the practical. That I will give you assurity. But assignments and other things, we have a separate time. We are going to review with you a separate time. It's not related to our class time. Eh? We will be designing one hour later or two hour earlier, something like we will be designing it. Based on that, we are going to discuss that assignments because everything will be in complete in the on time within a time that we can complete. So that we will be designing, we will be designing a team internally with you all. So that we will be reviewed separate. Like that only we can complete. So duration approximately three to four months. I can give you. If there are three to four months, regular session is going on. Assignment session also separately going on. Got okay. it. Nick. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to ask another question too. Um. So you said there will be doubt clarification session. So will that be on Saturday and Sunday, or will that be on weekdays? It depends on. Uh, I will uh, create some teams and uh, I will give you right. I will actually with all you and then only I will be designing the timing. Otherwise, I will not. So it yes. should should be suitable with everyone because few of them joining from different time zone. Few of them is in our India. Few of them is not in India. Even I am also not in India right now. So we have a different time zone. We have different time constraints available. I will check with and uh, with your team and uh, based on that I will schedule a time separate. Okay. So you don't worry about it. Yeah. One last question. Will you cover data modeling and you know uh, data governance, data quality, data steward? Data governance as a data engineer will not be doing it. But architect level, if you're going to work with architecture architect, then you must know some data governance. We will share you some information how data governance will work and some of the other key aspects. But we will not go in detail. But our cluster, everything will be following with some data governance, uh, some uh, SSL certificate policy, and all with our Hadoop cluster that will mm -hmm. be handled. It. But I will share my experience. I was designing and will provide some projects. Uh, so what are the data governance I have done? It that I will give you in that interview tips as a tricks, because okay. that's very important during your architect level interviews, the third level or fourth level interview. Other than they were so uh, that inputs I will give you here. Everything is focused as a data. Engineering topics. Okay. Uh, G, 
uh yeah yeah just now he is asking the data governance related uh, okay that is data governance you are literally covered from here i can understand uh if there somewhere that uh, integration while doing the integration in aws itself for snowflake somewhere we have to use the certificates uh, in real time we get the networking team they have give that some number or uh, some id from there we have to put it over there in this uh, cloud itself or from there uh, we are that, working in that in we will show as a example so why uh, yeah, th that's the reason uh, aws and snowflake we uh, are using to create some separate policy external ids and uh, we are uh, going to call them in that's not only a great data governance we are providing some accessibility between aws to azure But yeah, data governance, how somewhere, are Jay, to somewhere they data? are using HIPAA, somewhere they are using, what, what is the difference? I know that uh, why they are using uh, that uh, security purpose, they are using the double checkup and all that. Somewhere we have to check it, that is uh, so on square mark is that somewhere because of the, the data um, policy or uh, security purpose we have used. What I'm asking that real time, how to use that um, uh, where we have to encrypt, where we don't have encrypt like this way. Full and full, you tell that uh, at real time. Do uh, I will? I will. Maybe I will give you during our interview topics. Mm -hmm. Just remind me. I will give you some additional inputs because uh, seven protocol layers we can follow with our data governance and networking mm -hmm. related. So mm -hmm. EVPN and other by one by one certificate related. A lot of things is available. It's not easy to explain and not easy to show you everything and uh, in front of you. No, okay, gee, because, we, we are, uh, we are, we are going to. I will try to compare it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah can, while, to... while doing configuration, why I am asking? Why are you doing configuration before going to the any services uh, through AWS or uh, Snowflake? That time, this 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 time, the we have to put tick mark here. Or if you are having SSL certificate, this time you have to uh, tick mark here. You are, if you have any HIPAA certificate, like this, where you you, you show that. Uh, Like example, we can understand. No, no need to. The policy level, I will tell you. I am policy uh -huh. level. I can show you. And while connect with uh, AWS to Snowflake, some policy we have to design. That all will go with practical. Don't worry mm -hmm. about it. Okay. Apart from some of them is available. Like mm -hmm. uh, if you are trying to connect from remote to your environment, there is some VPN restriction is available. So mm -hmm. VPN restrictions is not only that. While you are accessing it, OTP, MFA, OAuth, lot of things. Blah blah blah. It will go a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So that all I will give you as a inputs. Okay. 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 Because we cannot design it at run time, but uh, we I will explain my experience because I just using some certifications, some authentication. What I have designed it, Kerberos authentication. I have designed it. That all I will tell you how it's working, what is the behavior in the backend. That all I will give you, and when to use these things. Like that, I can give some inputs to you. This yeah. topic is mostly related to data engineering concept with a practical manner. It's not related to some data governance, um, and uh, it's not easy to explain everything at once. In that same classes, but as your interest, I will share my experience as I interest to you. Don't worry. Okay. Working. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question, guys? Um, but um, Dinesh, um, I know you are covering Snowflake as part of this cohort. Um, mm. do you have any plan to touch upon the data breaks uh, from AWS? Azure AWS, uh, so Azure data breaks will go mostly. Uh, AWS Snowflake will go mostly as of my experience. So that will be Azure DataBricks separately. I just mentioned it because uh, Azure is uh, tie up with the DataBricks team, and uh, most of the use cases they are using Data Factory and DataBricks in Azure. As of my experience, I just noted that's the reason I didn't include that into AWS. But mm -hmm. AWS Snowflake is really big in real time and the trending trend setter right now. So that's the reason I just combined this two as a separate. But if you want to understand data breaks, uh, maybe Azure session will introduce you. You will get some notification announcement properly. Other time you will go in detail with Azure data breaks. So other time I'll give you some guidance. Data breaks is nothing. It's like a but as Harry who has developed this part, he has introduced that separate framework that they are deploying with the cloud. So. It's a bit different, but what all the concepts we have practiced with our environment, the same only available here. EMRFS, there it's called a DBFS or something. Here some magic commands is available. They are using some magic commands and they are mounting it. And they are in track with the AWS or Azure and of any one of the cloud and reading it the data. Same like is happening. So the same as it is, but I just, I don't like to 
uh, cover everything within a short time, right? Because within a three to four months, it's a bit difficult to complete all the topics at once. And uh, people get boring more than three months or four months. That I also noticed. Before we have introduced with the full stack, to give all the combination it was reached up to six to seven months sometimes mm-hmm. but the people are getting bored and people are not joining the clause after three months or four months so mm-hmm. because it's a lot of the topics involved so it might be confused or it might be frustrated and few of them joining from a different time zone they are sacrificing that time am i right yeah. so that's a bit difficult so we will not yes. be cover everything at once and we understand the problem with the people we are getting the feedback what was strong with us that's mm-hmm. reason we just divided and we will be mentioned to cover focus with the 3 to 4 months mostly all the topics got it but the reason why i was asking is now i don't know but let mm-hmm. companies have a multi cloud concept mm-hmm. that is you can touch up i know you are going to cover um, azure with the data bricks in in depth and deep mm-hmm. but i was right, wondering right. that the pond like you know AWS you're going to cover snowflake in depth but AWS and uh, databricks if you i don't know whether you are planning to cover it kind of very high level like you know well, probably one or two mm. we will we will try to cover everything uh, as much as but uh, um, depends on the people and that time is very matter so mm. best one will take the decision from our end okay, okay. because we have experience in the future previous uh, full stack data engineering courses where is the problem was raised and what is the issue we are getting the good feedback but uh, oh, we are noticed the people are sacrificing in time at that time we have them joining in the mid time it's really uh, uh, disappointing us so that's the reason they have some timeline they within a timeline they we have to provide some proper quality to them so that's our motive if they have enough time they will be rectified get back they will be joined by the super session that is also we just total so that's the reason we just divided yeah makes sense thanks nish okay any other question guys uh, why people are going for snowflake whatever the things uh, you can do it in snowflake you can very well do it in aws itself or azure itself right uh, uh, during the snowflake... creating a creating a data lake importing a reading data from data lake through hive and uh, putting that into aws glue or emr and then from that to rds it can be very well done in uh, aws or azure why snowflake is getting more importance uh, it's a bit interesting question uh, it's not an easy answer to explain within a one word the performance and uh, cost this too is a matter we cannot uh, go more than that uh, just remind me during our session i will show some of the example in front of you based on that you can understand what why the people are moving to the snowflake and all. Um, okay, okay. The mm. two things mostly one is performance another one is cost okay i will show you both in, in front of you while starting with the snowflake just uh, remind me maximum okay okay, okay. i will give you some more additional features with the snowflake and all in detail then we will be touch up on this okay 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 so from your uh, experience how the snowflake is getting integrated with aws for example let's say the files are sitting in s3 hmm. uh, is it possible for snowflake to read data yes. from s3 Yes, three. Yeah, that is we are going to see as a projects here with the Snowflake AWS combinations. Okay. I will show the examples. Okay, because mostly the data will be come into the S3 bucket. From S3, we are going to read and write the data into Snowflake tables at the uh, external stages. So that I will create all the pipelines in front of you and will show the examples at runtime. Okay, as in a scenario, can a EMR uh, pull the data from S3 and push it into Snowflake? Is it possible? Yeah, you can do that. Via Spark Engine, you can use it. That's a Snow Park is available. So that all is a practical topics, right? I will show with the practical example in front of you. Don't worry. I am going to write the code. I am going to develop all the configuration in front of you. What has happened? Why we are doing it? Everything we are going to discuss in detail manner. So I will give you more inputs on this. We are avoiding this theory part because. theory is killing lot of time you for you so we will give you some inputs what is the architecture once architecture over we are going to see everything with a practical manner because a single practical one hour session will explain 10 hours theory that's our trust so we will give you everything with practical manner we'll configure everything in front of you in the practical don't worry okay okay so thank you yeah uh, dinesh yeah please yes dinesh 
So currently this uh, course is uh, going by English language, right? So do you have any plan for Tamil language? It uh, depends on the nominations and the... Uh, uh, I want to know who else joining from apart from Tamil that I want to check with the people. Based on we will take the decision. As of now, we just plan to start with English, but I just noted a few of them joining from Tamil. Does anybody join apart from Tamil language from here? Anybody? Uh, okay. Yeah, my turn on. Yes. Oh, great, 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 great. So that's uh, uh, we are uh, we uh, we have some limitation teams uh, with the number of peoples. If it's grasped to more than that, we'll be creating a separate batch. So we'll getting some nominations as well. Based on the nomination, we are choosing the separate batch. So we are getting the nomination almost uh, two hundred nomination we have received. So based on the only we just decide to go. They are having the options to choose to go with Tamil or English. So based on that, we will be taking a decision. Once the batch is introduced, we will be started, and then we will be collect the nomination again. We will be compare it how much for Tamil and how much for English. So it will be repeated. Based on the nomination inputs, we just plan to go with that. Okay, you will get the proper announcement. And if you are really comfort with the Tamil, you know, problem after end of the session, we will give some additional time, a separate timeline for you all, and we will discuss in detail. Don't worry. Okay, I'll so, just so let me know. Yeah, sorry. For an example, if if we are going to plan for a uh, Tamil separate batch, you know, so will it be in this? Uh, Depends on that the nomination. Depends on the nominations and the people batch members who are joining the course, right? Based on we'll take the decision. Uh, so my question Tamil, is like, uh, will you be starting the course immediately, or you we, some we need to wait for this course completed then only you can start? the tamil batch uh, it's a depends on that is i'm trying to say if if okay. only everyone Fine. is joined in only tamil we can convert it to the tamil language no problem if few of them joined with english we will go this batch in the english and a separate batch we have limitation maximum 30 members in the batch we will not be go more than that so if crossed to more than 30 members we will be create a separate batch otherwise we will be create as a separate team Like that only we just design it because quality is important. We will not be include all of them in that single batch because we cannot trace you all what you are doing it. Just joining is not important. What you are doing it? Oh, are you able to cap capable to understand our course and are you able to touch up all the commands by yourself? That is we have to monitor as a trainer. So we will be limited with the seats with our batch member maximum. After that we will be create a separate batch groups. Like that, we just design it. So we will be take the decision at runtime. We will you will get all the announcement information in proper way. Okay, got it. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Any other question, guys? Uh, Dinesh, I have no. Yeah, please. One question I have. Like, yeah, please. Uh, actually, in the, I mean the same question which I uh, mean someone asked, like Azure. I mean this is what I am planning. I mean so, but this course will I mean then I I. Need to have a different session, or should I have been in this course itself? That's what my. You are expecting Azure. Just wait for some time. We will be creating a separate batch for Azure, and a different timeline. So you may be okay. join the session. That no, is that covered will... Azure DataBricks. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah. No, no. My is... question is that that will be a combination of all these things. Uh, instead of AWS, it will be Azure, like that, or. Instead, yeah. Instead of AWS Snowflake, it should be Azure DataBricks. Previous topics as it is the same, high spark everything is the same. As we had to be snowflake, we'll be skip from here, and instead of that, we'll be going to cover with. I should run the. I should run the. Yeah, okay. topic five and four, six, right? That will be modified here. That's it. Okay. okay. Suppose uh, we are willing to join this session as well, and uh, as an add-on, we need that uh, Azure and uh, DataBricks as well. Means yeah, while starting we the session. You will get the not announcement right at the time. You can join that Azure topic, and you can learn it. That's not a problem. Okay. Yeah. Then it is mm. okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Sir. Yeah. Any other question, guys? Yeah. Hi, Dinesh. This is uh, Nitish Desai. Yeah. Hi, Nitish. Yeah. Uh, the batches will be uh, most of uh, weekend, right? On a weekend. Yeah. The same time today and tomorrow. The same time we are going to start it. Uh, no, in future, uh, when we be, uh, when we uh, for the practical purpose. Practical? No, I'm asking about the uh, in future uh, mm. batches mostly on weekend time. Uh, weekend time uh, only on Saturday Sunday, right? 
or friday uh, saturday sunday three days it depends on the people uh, so we'll be going to go with the uh, friday saturday and sunday or friday saturday something like it's a combination people availability and uh, the times line everything we will be focused based on we will take that okay means availability of uh, team members only we can see we can see what the most okay week days we are doing some pvc like uh, i said some ll model creation right the custom models and all that's going on week days so we don't have time to focus with the classes so we are focusing with the model preparations something is going on the back end so just wait for some time guys in the future upgrade uh, images what are you are providing for your practice right that will give you a terrific experience for your learning so at the time you can replace your images immediately and you can use it you can switch and use it as much as but we are trying our best to improve our quality preferences as much as possible that's we are doing it once model is ready right now data curation is going on everything is ready that will plug and play and giving to you for your future practice all the time 24/7 so that's going on so we don't have time that week days to be frank of saying we are working as a team and we are doing some projects so during the time we will be doing it so mostly training session in the week days projects pvcs that all will go on week days like that we just designed it okay yeah got it thanks we have some budget constraint to be frank so we cannot develop our model at run time immediate but we are using a lot of open sources but uh, somewhere we are struggling so this training fees and all right we are going to implement with our poc projects that's going on y- yes understood understood <laughs> yeah thanks thank you. okay fine fine any other question guys ji every interview they are asking about the data modeling like this is it important for data engineer data data model basics is important so that designing flow data model is a two layer is available what you mentioned it here yeah it is a, it is open source tool is available from there we can uh, learn it that is no difficult on that no data modeling is nothing but you just designing the schemas that's also one of the data modeling mm-hmm. another one data model you are going to analyze that environment setup right that is mm-hmm. also part of data modeling so depends on uh, your business use case it will be vary so that's the reason i'm asking uh, so table level data level you are going to choose that that's a data mod designing sunday uh, some er admin diagram you can use it and doing it another one is environment setup as architect you have to design the data model then you know, how your data will be frequently moved into your environment what is the time duration frequencies and this how you are planning to schedule what is the type of lld as uh, hld that all you want to provide that's also kind of data model so they have been to mention in jd itself that if I, when i go for, when i go and see that the jd in data engineering related they are asking that uh, well knowing about the data modeling like this way they are mentioning they no. ha- they mention it uh, pinpoint itself they didn't mention any pinpoint like this way they are telling that uh, technology terminology <laughs> they like this they have mentioned it that is only data modeling terminology only they have mentioned it there i know i know this is happening so uh-huh. that's the reason i asked the question in detail so mm-hmm. environment level also is a kind of data modeling only okay so it's a representation of what you are going to do with your projects that's a representation i think behind it what Steam i understood not that is uh, when uh, when i work in web development that i may be making a wireframe that is uh, what we are going to do to the, the project itself that is we make it the wireframe like this way we are going to do data modeling am i correct that is for understanding i'm not sure exactly with your See, point data but modeling, uh, data yeah, modeling data modeling wireframe means that is what, what are you going to do the project like this way we are plan it uh, the one drawing itself uh, we submit that client uh, they will give approval after that going for that uh, development like this way we are going wireframe like this way data modeling also uh, end to end project or architect level or uh, schema level like this way we have to prepare separate separate uh, for that project uh, uh, it's uh, make it that project uh, diagram um, like that way for approval purpose so what is that use case i am asking mm, yeah prakash you had some input yeah, right just da- share data model is your blueprint of your project what see particularly in uh, that is the base for your project for that you need domain knowledge everything okay so for data engineer 
uh, can you speak with little audible one. little loud Sorry. please it please speak little loud yeah for data engineer you should know whatever that data model you are getting from your architect or solution architect you should know uh, you should understand the data model first you are going to as a data engineer you are going to implement it but the sole responsibility it is uh, the preparing the data modeling it's sole responsibility of solution architect and uh, yeah G, you, what you are saying be... saying i can understand but whenever go for data engineer jd i'm not asking about the data architect jd data engineer jd one of the use case mo most of the 99 percentage they are asking about data modeling knowledge about the data modeling or experience about data modeling this word uh, is there uh if i uh, while do while studying this uh, data engineer course i can uh, if i if I, if you tell you about that specification i can do that from uh, any youtube and all we can learn it okay. that's a, but the use case what is the use case i'm asking uh, what purpose we are going to do the data modeling i am asking that's a comparison i giving that is wide frame we are doing for data model. develop yeah, <laughs> yeah. Data okay modeling, it, it's your actually it is a plain english requirement you will get it from the business user right they will the business user will give their requirement in a plain english words only i am bluntly telling okay they will give it in a plain english this thing only they will give some document to you right? okay okay that's what you are going to get it that you have to convert it into how uh, um, i am i am telling like from high point of view i am telling that you have to convert it into like uh, the table and the, the db structure you have to change it for that only it's the data modeling that kind of activity only it's called data modeling hmm. uh, okay uh, there are so many layers like three layers you have to do logical data modeling physical data uh, physical data <laughs> modeling only it's your physical data structure okay your db structure okay conceptual data modeling that under ba will do it that, that's what i'm telling data engineer is not going to involve anywhere but if you want to learn then you can go uh, like, as you said so many youtube videos and all is that <laughs> Prakash, thanks, Prakash. Thanks, Prakash. Chitra, I will explain what it is. Okay, simple way. Data modeling, you know, so we can decide a different, different way. It's not a big deal, but it depends on the use case. It's, a, it's just like a presentations, what you're going to do with your business use case. That's it. So this is, you can do with, as he said, uh, attributes level, logical or physical, that will come to attributes level. That's one of them. Another one is environment level, cluster level. If you are going to integrate with the Hive to uh, AWS or Snowflake, you are designing the pipeline flow. This pipeline flow also kind of data model only. How we are going to sync your data and module, transferring your data, the entire flow, right? That's also called pipeline. Uh, data model. This is one of the data model. Another one is attributes level. You are designing the tables, you are designing that flow entirely with the database or table level only, then you are designing some all the primary key following with the constraints and the secondary keys or foreign keys, something right. That are also you're going to design it. That is a attribute level. This okay. tool is mostly using on it. Okay. okay? So just a representation, what you're going to do, how you're going to deliver your business use case to that uh, as a project. So while you convert the business use case into the project, you're doing some designings. That designing is called data model. Either it should be a data basis level as an entity relationship it's called. Entity relationship level or a environment level, both you are going to touch up. So that's is not a part of your code development or data engineering. It's an architect level. They only design and expose and will give you all the information. You are going to adopt whatever they have provided and you will be start your development. Suppose you are facing some struggles during your development. You maybe raise a complaints to your architect. This is the data I am using it. This data you just declare you, we can connect with this environment. Unfortunately, this data doesn't support with this environment. And, and we don't have any... Uh, proper exposure directly we can sync up. At the time, they are doing some changes with their architecture and will uh, give back to you because some policy will be restrict your accessibility to that particular 
development directly to them so they will be adding some data governance activity in middle and they will be connecting you know, set the some connection layer or alternate solution they will giving to you based on the you can sync up and trade it especially in banking domain most of the data model will be following with lot of changes so they will be designing the uh, llt designs for the step 1 step 2 step 3 and they will be providing the finalized one because a lot of key restrictions a lot of uh, um, controls they will be designed at that so we cannot go this is only the data model as a data engineer they will be mentioning that the business use case design the flow that is also data model or you are working with any particular tool table basis that table you want to sync up and come come convert into hive table at the time you have to design the entire flow that is also we are calling as a data mm -hmm. model only okay 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 so fee structure already you got that information from the people right from your team and all so hope you got that in references in this uh, 26000 is of fees and uh, you can pay by two installment while joining this batch you can pay one installment another one after one month you can pay the balance so we will allowing you to provide with the two installment and additional discount 2000 rupees those who are all paying between uh, until tomorrow so tomorrow is a sunday we those who are paying first installment you will get 2000 flat discounts because those so few of them know about us very well so we will give you some additional discounts for them and a few of them doesn't know about they must know all the topics we will allow you with the demo session until next week no problem with that those who are also joining the session after next week we are freezing the batch we will be create as a separate batch for them then you can pay your payment no problem okay so until we will allow you for all those topics and uh, demo session real time practice environment and all so you can go with that as it is okay so actual so the fees is 26 with the two installment overall is completing within tomorrow they will get 2000 flat discount mode of payment dinesh uh mode of payment you can pay by account or google pay is available i may be check with my team uh, or they have designed with the uh, uh rasur pay rasur pay something is available i may be check with them yeah, i will get back to ping the details in the group um uh, just uh, i will text you just ping me in uh, separate i will give you the all the informations and a separate one to one okay because uh, overall yeah, is interested sure. uh, right now i just create the batch and i just free the people overall is joining they are only will be added to the separate group and uh, it's a private batch group that is going to be start by next week onwards once batch group is started until you are going to see the demo session every day continuously in our topic and then once batch is freezed we will be start with the enrollment setup and all with you and the deployment with your system and the start with the assignments immediately in that so and um, um, after next week it's going to be happen so just give all the information in front of yasna okay we are paying for english class or uh, which tamil uh, uh, depends on uh, until next week we cannot assure it based on that how many of you joined if even a single english member is available we don't have any other option we have to go with english okay yeah <laughs> because we have to respect the people we must go uh, as per uh, their uh, convenience all right yeah, it, yeah in case of any doubts we can just i mean we can have no problem no problem no problem always welcoming you okay okay yeah thanks okay guys can you Anything send else? the uh, link for payment fees paying the fees uh, just text me in private okay because we will provide all the information and we will keep on trace with your all your nomination forms and all those who are all interest just ping us and those who are all is responsibility for your sponsor right just to ping them to pay start immediately and we will be sync with them and we will be discuss with them okay yeah how much amount for the first in uh, installment Uh, within if supposed to pay within tomorrow you can pay first installment at 12000 total 24000 you pay by two installment okay if suppose you are paying okay. after uh, tomorrow it should be at 26000 so you have to pay 13000 as a first installment it's a uh, depends on you we will show all the demo in front of you right you have okay. keep on watching all the demos at once so you'll get the confidence so few of them already know and few of them keep waiting for long for our batches so okay. for their waiting we are giving some face discount that's yeah, it yeah understood understood means first installment will be the 50% amount yeah 
Yeah. Only two installment you can pay. Understood. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything uh, else, guys? We, sorry. Yeah. Then when we will know that. All the students discount out. is there, Ji. <laughs> oh, st- sorry, one by one. When will we know that? All the students discount is there. <laughs> old <laughs> student is, uh, maybe we will discuss it separately old student i don't know who else join maybe i will discuss with them best and we'll take it okay another uh, question dinesh, uh, dinesh when we will know the tamil batch is starting or not because if we want to continue in this same batch uh, uh, maybe next week after we once we freezed then only we know until we okay. cannot confirm once the so batch is freezed and uh, if available because this time is allocated for them another batch is parallelly going on once the batch is over then only we will start it and that is also based on nomination how much we receive the nomination how many of okay. them is interest based on that only we will be selected okay i am also working not uh, for, not at par means you you are not going to start the batch again the based on the nominations only we will be planning to check because in this nomination i will give you some uh, option right either okay. tamil or english so that people okay. will prefer language they'll be choosing it so that is also a matter to choose that batch and okay. b- because few of them waiting for a long time almost yes. six months uh, was going on so few of them is waiting for long so we have to respect everyone so okay. that is also is important <laughs> so we'll be following all the proper uh, matrix so you'll get a proper honors for everything okay don't okay. worry about it so no i don't so, want to wait another four months to uh, start this that's why i want <laughs> that's what that's what that's what so, okay just give me some time i have to check up and uh, one batch is still going on so once it is okay. done that only we will start a new batch we need a timeline as well so everything we have to think and best as only we can take the decisions so just okay. give me some time on that okay okay then sure <laughs> okay guys anything else Uh, if i pay uh, first installment by tomorrow so uh, when will be the batch starting means uh, uh, by, it's started uh, already tomorrow is a demo session direct session today okay. only just a class introduction what's going to cover everything tomorrow is an actual practical session so okay. i want to show you at least one practical session before getting the, your commitments and all right you, i need to give some confidence that's very okay. very important as a trainer so tomorrow after the demo session you can pay within a tomorrow if you pay you can get a discount that's it sure. okay i am not forcing you as well don't worry about it but <laughs> i would like to show my stuff in front of you that's very very important as a trainer and i need your 100% confidence okay this guy will definitely help us to grow like that you want to enter to us that's very very important right so that confidence i will give you don't worry about it. yeah okay? sure understood understood thanks yeah. so from from your perspective like what would be the tentative uh, uh course st- start time and end time i mean to this say the same per day per day is it like same time day basis same time whatever you have started right this is your time it is freezed for your times only this for this batch okay so same time for you we will be joined so for you is 8:30 yeah 8:30 to 10:30 for me is more uh, 6 to 8 so we'll be fun focusing this the same time only okay okay so will it be batches in friday and thursday or weekdays uh, no so another batch we plan to start with friday and saturday uh, we uh, uh, depends on the people uh, we will be focusing with the nominations as well we'll see on that and we will take the decision based on that as well don't worry about it like this batch completely saturday and sunday as of now okay okay thank you thank you okay okay and i think else mostly we have discussed all the topics and all the content anything Okay if no queries we can close today Already we are close to more than the time Yeah Okay, okay thank you ji Yeah thank yeah. you thank, thank you. you thank you all Thank you yeah. we'll join Finish one question Yeah please uh, Is there any uh, weekday batch uh, going to start No we are not planning big days already we have a lot of commitments so projects poc and business a lot of commitments week days we cannot take any sessions if we have big days free time maximum one week maximum i'm saying 
every day morning 6 o'clock i have to start and uh, do some poc and give assignments to the people for my team members to complete the PO, that particular r and d work and all so completely it's taking long time it's heating our time but it's a learning perspective so we cannot uh, avoid it to be frank i'm saying so only in weekdays weekends okay okay okay, okay. 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 Mm. Because learning is very important. We cannot sacrifice that. We are using mostly weekdays as of now. Yeah, please. Yeah, Jim. My if I go for this, uh, my system any pre-request to hardware related uh, things. Uh, How much your RAM? Uh, eight GB. I'll try to increase more than eight GB. Eight GB will work, but if you go more than eight GB, it will be will expand and run with efficient mm. manner. Okay, so by okay. default, everyone is using eight GB. Our system is work with eight GB as of now. But those who are having more RAM, that will increase the performance more better. No, okay, no, that, because why I'm asking the setup is in our system only. No, that is we are using that uh, uh, from um, my laptop. That is only using that uh, any username password like this way, or uh, we are we are going to set up in my laptop uh, our uh, individual laptop itself. in your laptop itself it's going to be deployed okay you are going to install the docker desktop and other containerization references virtual right virtual memories and wsl2 everything we are going to help to install it deploy mm -hmm. these images with you this images every one year once is going to be replaced because uh, we are using some ssl certificate internally so it is allowed only year only after that it's going to be expired at the time you are getting new upgrade images again you are going to deploy it in your environment as well Okay. okay so if any changes any improvements we have done we will give you that images immediate you can replace it will not affect any your coding practice because just an environment whatever you develop the code is just going to be replaced there automatically will work that i will give you as assurity you are giving okay. i said docker images am i correct Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Everything is container okay. basis because it's okay. a very important for the practice level. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, if already I seen that a seven fifty two GB you have used for that multi node cluster for that uh, is it uh, not possible to everyone? Now that's the reason I'm asking you how much space is availability in my. It's a depends on your local hard disk space. It just adapt and generate it at once. Okay. Okay. Oh, we will give you some more guidance while we are we are doing some installation part, right? No, no, if you tell me because tomorrow onwards if class started, if you telling like this way, I can make it that according that uh, space like this way, I can ready for that. No, That's your that. local desktops or your hard disk space is available, right? So minimum fifty GB is available. That's more enough for your practice and all that. I will give you a surety. Okay. Um, Oh, that's a reserved space, possibly. That's so we can use it. But okay. environment, if you want to work without any errors or any uh, mm -hmm. failures, the command is going to be perform much better. Then go a little bit more higher ramps. Okay, just eight GB to sixteen GB or twelve GB, just increase. That's more enough. We have already okay. done the testing with our nodes, machines, and all. It's mm -hmm. a lightweight we have designed. So we have compressed and we have designed entirely with the lightweight. So it's working fine. But uh, most of your performance related depends on your processor and RAM. So if possible, just increase a little bit. That's it. Okay. Already in my machine that uh, VM is there. Uh, there is no problem on that. No, that is separate. No problem, no problem. The VM is separate, the uh, Docker is separate. So okay. we will be following this Docker desktop and the Docker implementation containerization basis. VM, we are getting a lot of cache and uh, struggles, but Docker will not be raising those things. That's the reason we just choose to go with uh, Docker and a multi-node cluster will not be allowed with your VM proper, but in Docker is possible. Okay. Multi-node practice, we need a containerization concept is very very important. In the future, we are planning to deploy everything with a single as a because everyone is joining. At the same time, right? So as a team, also we plan to create. So at the time Kubernetes cluster, we are planning to introduce, and you are going to work together. Your system environment is going to be used by others, but there is some restriction is available as of now. We cannot do it. We are doing some our POC. We have a lot of POC checkpoints is available with our business use cases. So we are doing it on right now. So okay. we are using some edge nodes separate. Those edge nodes, all your machine is going to be communicate together. Then it will be expand your machines like a peer-to-peer -peer concept we just introduced. So that is also going on. 
So everything is done. Everything is ready. Then we will get the proper announcement. Okay. Right. We are focusing LLM model development, and that's so priority for us. No others. We are we are already started, but uh, we don't have proper time to do all the R and D again. So we are doing step by step as of now. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay, guys. Any other questions? What is Windows is enough. Windows is will work. Don't worry about it. Follow script is following by Windows as of now. We have created some custom script code scripting and all. So Windows is enough. Okay, guys. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay thank you guys thank you thank you I just stop it now Okay guys thank you